and we will get started. Okay, well, welcome again, everybody. This is the D2L Awards Tool Workshop, and we're gonna talk a little bit about how to incentivize student behavior and recognize their achievement in our online courses. We have on our agenda today, uh, several learning objectives. First, we wanna talk a little bit about one of the theoretical frameworks that might help inform our thinking about awards and badges when it comes to online courses. We're gonna talk about the different roles that learners might have um, in a game, in an online course, if we want to think of them as games. We are also gonna talk about some examples of types of awards that you might want to use in your courses. Uh, some ideas about how you might schedule awards. There's definitely many options about how to do that in your course, so we'll look at a few of those. And then we'll actually get into a D2L course and we'll actually look at how to create an award in the D2L award tool. So the learning theory that I think uh, best exemplifies awards and badges in online courses is social cognitive theory, which is Ben Dura. And this evolved from his earlier work on social learning theory, but then he further developed it into social cognitive theory, which bridges behaviorism and cognitivism. And so the idea is that not only are we processing our thoughts um, mentally between an input and an output, but we're also including our observations of other people in our environment as part of that. And so our behavior is determined by the interaction between us and our environment. The environmental factors would include the social context of our learning domain. So in our case, D2L is our learning environment. And so the interaction of students and faculty and students to students in that environment definitely play a part in our learning. Some of the personal factors would be the mental processes that we're going through, but also the affective characteristics of the learner. So it's a lot different and in an online environment, obviously to see the affective um, character traits of, of us, but some ways that we do that is we might use emoticons or we might use um, greetings in our messages. And so that sort of models to our students that we are people who can be trusted and we're their ally and we're here to support them and that we want them to learn. And so motivation plays a significant role in this type of learning environment. Um, does our ability that we have now enable us to behave appropriately? That can obviously be challenging in an online course to where your learners are arriving with many different sets of knowledge and skills. And so some learners may not be as capable as some other learners in some of your knowledge or skill areas that you're trying to teach. Um, we have to, as people, decide what are the benefits of doing the behavior, um, what's in it for me. Um, we also have to think about what are the costs if I don't engage in this behavior. For most of the time in an online course, we think about the detraction would be you're going to earn a poor grade and the benefit would be that you earn a good grade. But some learners are motivated by some things other than just grades. And we're going to talk about that when we talk about learner or player roles in a game. Um, but gamification of a course can help with some motivation because when it's used appropriately, the award can help learners feel a sense of satisfaction and pride when they accomplish a goal. So obviously when they look in the grade book and they're going to see their grade, if they've earned a high score, that will be a sense of pride. But sometimes you want to award things that aren't necessarily one of your learning assessments. You might want to reward other behaviors that you're trying to encourage. And so we'll talk a little bit about how you might do that through the awards tool. Richard Bartle is an English um, gaming expert, and he developed these four roles of players in a multiple user domain. And even though we're talking about online learning, we definitely have multiple learners in our classes. And some of these, I think, still really apply nicely. You'll probably be able to tell which one of these you are. I think it's pretty easy most of the time to figure out which one of these you are, even if you're not a gamer. So the first player characteristic is an achiever. An achiever's primary goal is to earn all of the points or master all of the skills in a course or game. They are very results oriented. 
Um, some things in your course that would be directed toward an achiever would be the ability for them to replay the game or the piece over and over again. So this might be um, a strategy like giving students multiple attempts on a test or a quiz um, because they are able to keep going until they actually earn the highest number of points or answer all of the questions correctly. This kind of player is also interested in tiered achievement. So they like to say, oh, okay, I'm at this level and now I've moved up to the next level and now I'm at mastery level. You can envision what this looks like in a game. You, in a game, uh, video game, you go up level by level by level. And so we obviously already organize our classes this way in a lot. We content chunk, we scaffold, um, we also schedule our content modules in order appropriately. So we're already directing students in this sort of way that an achiever would like to uh, reach. This kind of learner also is motivated by status and also by badges. Um, these kinds of learners like to know that they are at the top of their game and at the top of the class. The next kind of learner is an explorer. And while an achiever is results oriented, an explorer is definitely process oriented. Their primary goal is to uncover everything that you have in your course. So these are your learners who will actually go to the optional content that you've included or the supplemental resources, and they'll look at all of those different pieces that you've added. So this kind of learner is motivated by different kinds of gaming content or award content. So they would be interested in things that are surprise content. These are the kind of people who like to look for Easter eggs in movies and video games. Um, they also are interested in avatars. It's something about constructing their role in the game and in your, in your course. And they like the unpredictability of some of those badges. A killer isn't quite as bad as it sounds, but their primary goal is to compete with and beat all of the other members. So they're similar to an achiever in that they want to be on top, but their motivation isn't really to master the skill, it's just to beat out all the other players. And generally, I don't think we see this too terribly much in an online course, or at least I have had <laughs> the good fortune to not have this kind of student in my course. Um, and most students do tend to follow the norms um, of the online environment. But these kinds of students would be motivated by leaderboards or competitions or status or ranking. So they would want to know and they'd want everyone else in the class to know that they're number one on that knowledge or skill category. And then the final gaming role is the socializer whose primary goal would be engagement with other members in the environment. And these are the students who don't complain about discussions. They really like doing discussions and they like learning more about the other students in the class. These students are motivated by discussion forums. They like group activities. They like to create avatars and they like earning badges. And sometimes they just think the socialization and the relationship building is part of the end result for them. They like that just as much as they do the knowledge and skills. The tricky thing is that our goal in an online course is to include awards that will appeal to all of these types of learners. And so that can be a little bit challenging because what is going to appeal to a socializer might be much different than what appeals to an achiever. But luckily, there are some ways that we can do that where we can actually sprinkle in multiple types into our course. A few examples of the types of awards that you might include in your course would be awards for participation. So these are not recommended to use frequently because they'll lose their luster pretty fast, but these are the kinds of awards you might incorporate at the beginning of your course to introduce your learners that you're going to use badges or awards. And so it's something to say, we're gonna have these available in our course, and here's the first one. One example might be for a student who completed all of the course introduction activity. So they read your syllabus, they did your introduction discussion, it's welcoming to the class to say, I'm glad you're here, it looks like you're engaged, um, this is your award. Um, there also might be an option to do a course scavenger hunt instead of a syllabus quiz. So you might, instead of quizzing your students on 10 things to find in your course on a quiz, you could ask them to still find those 10 things, but they would earn a badge at the end of that activity instead of a score on an exam. 
A behavioral award example would be behaviors that you're trying to encourage in your students. So one thing in my course that is always difficult to um, incentivize students to do is to actually read and incorporate their feedback. So in my courses, the content is generally scaffold and the assignments build on each other. And if students don't read the feedback, it's really challenging for them to do well in the next assignment. So an idea might be that I would incentivize this by giving them a badge if they did a particularly good job at taking my feedback from one assignment and incorporating it and making improvements in the next assignment. If you have a discussion forum in your class where you ask students to share their questions and then encourage their other classmates to respond, you might have like a helpful classmate badge where you would give those students an award because they have actually engaged and they're providing help to their peers. Um, if you are have a writing intensive class or an information literacy intensive class, you could incentivize students for attending outside sessions. So writing center sessions or library sessions. Um, you could also incentivize students for taking self assessments if the self assessments in your class will actually help students do better on the summative work then you could actually include a badge for that. And some interesting ideas for that would be, you could actually unlock maybe a second attempt. So if you did the self-assessment, you unlock a second attempt badge and the student could actually have two opportunities on the exam instead of one. Another option would be bonus points. So you did the self-assessment and so maybe you get five extra points on your quiz as an incentive for completing that task. A performance award is exactly what it sounds like. It's an award for some type of completion of an activity, a knowledge, or a skill. And these might be outside of your regular assessments. So you might do things for completing an, an entire module. Or if you want to really look at one particular aspect of an assignment, such as grammar or citation style or uh, academic writing style, you could give badges for that kind of activity as well. You could also do this on discussions. Um, I'll show an example of these where I use an exemplary discussion award, for example. So I will include this and when a student earns this, it's because they uh, earned an exemplary score on the rubric and I'm hoping that that's going to incentivize them to continue that same kind of discussion engagement going forward. An incremental award would be used for scaffolded levels of knowledge or skill. So you could think about this if we want to use an information literacy example, we might first have a badge for an information explorer. So this is a student who may be on your first information literacy assignment, maybe they earned a marginal grade, but at least they made a good attempt. Maybe by the next assignment, they earn a little bit higher grade or they display that competency at a higher level. And then by the end of the course, maybe they've actually reached expert status in information literacy. So you could have a tiered credential like that in a badge. And then a meta award would be badges for badges or awards for awards. So I like to think of these in um, complete competency areas for the course. So I'll continue on the information literacy example. I might have multiple assessments in my course that require students to locate, evaluate, and synthesize information sources. And so in D2L, I could actually choose a lot of different criteria from those assignments, and I could give the student an information literacy award for that reason. The other nice thing about that kind of award is that it gives me a quick look to see how many of my students actually reach that level of competency for all of those kinds of assignments. D2L has a competency tool so you can do this in other ways but the award tool would let the student have the benefit of also having a badge for that. If you're in a program uh, such as an MT Engage major pathway, this could also work because the student could add that badge or show that award if they were doing a capstone portfolio, for example. They could show not only examples of how they have used information sources appropriately, but they had actually earned an award in a course that showed that they could use information sources correctly in multiple ways. The different ways of using an award are continuous, fixed, and variable. 
So it's really important for us to think about maintaining some kind of balance between the different types of award schedules. You don't want to give a badge or award for everything because students will quickly get bored with them and they will not be very motivating. So a continuous award schedule would be a badge for every activity. So their first discussion post or their first assignment. And this would be the type that we were talking about starting a course with this, just to signal to learners that you're going to use awards and that they're available. But then you would only use these for assignments that occur periodically, like completing a module or passing um, multiple modules. If you wanted to use these for discussions, you might do them for the first discussion, the fifth discussion, and the tenth discussion, if those are particularly important discussions on particular content. The key is to just not do them all of the time. And then the fixed ratio is giving badges for every second or third activity in a series. So you would want to communicate to your learners that the criteria for earning badges is getting tougher. Uh, you might want to use these for the meta or incremental types of badges to where you want to give them an award for completing all of the modules, for example. And then a variable badge would be where you're just trying to sprinkle in badges kind of unsurprisingly uh, to students. So one of the ideas for that might be that they viewed all of the content in module three. Uh, you can choose a module that is particularly challenging for students or that has a lot of information that you want students to read. You might also include a variable one for posting over the number of required discussions in a discussion. So if you require your students to post to two students, if they responded to five students, that might be something that you want to award. Or you could target specific learner behaviors, like the fun, the more fun things. So if you had a student who was particularly um, kind or generous to another student by offering help or providing some resources, that might be something you could do as well. And so now I want to click on over to a D2L instance so that we can actually look at awards in real time. So can everybody see now the D2L shell on the screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so depending on how your nav bar is organized, you may have awards up on your nav bar, but if you don't, the way that you're going to find them is to go to edit course. And the awards tool is in the assessment category of tools. So you're going to find the awards tool. And in your course, unless someone has already copied awards to you, you won't necessarily see any awards. You're gonna see people in your class list. I'm in a development shell, so we can only see myself. And then there's another tab that's course awards. So these are awards that I've created in other instances of my course that I have copied over to this course. The great thing about awards is that they will copy if you have made the settings um, that way. And so you can change the criteria every semester, but you wouldn't have to recreate the actual award or badge as D2L calls them. And the My Awards category is where a student would see the awards that they have earned in your course. And the tab that says view available rewards is going to show awards that have been made available to you that you may not have even created. If you click the box that says show all available rewards, you're going to see awards that are available throughout D2L that other users may have made available to you. So you'll notice that there are awards here. If we scroll down, I want to show you if you've done the MTSU online certification that Tara and Kim offer, you'll notice that there are badges in that course. So you could see examples of what other instructors are using in their online courses. If you teach in the College of Business, there's a Dale Carnegie uh, exemplary reward, which I'm going through so fast, I can't see them now. But um, so you could see examples from other people as well. And depending on which instance of your course you're in, you might see options that you don't see. So I'm in my development shell and I'm only seeing what I've shared with myself. So in order to create an award, you would use the in the course awards tab, you would go to add award to course. And in this, 
tool, you're going to see D2L has lots of options for awards so that you don't have to create these icons on your own. You can create them. You can use the awards that they have embedded in D2L. And they have a lot of really interesting examples. So this one is of the above and beyond award, the student who goes above and beyond the minimum requirements for no other reason than to help the class. So this might be a student who's responding to questions on your course uh, questions discussion board, for example, or a breakthrough award for a student who really grew outside their comfort zone or who really grew in their knowledge or skills over the semester. Um, there are different completion awards. This, this example says getting a 100 on quiz one. You'll see then in my course, I've created this award on my, for myself, and this also shows up in my list. So I can see awards that I have created as well as awards that D2L has included. And then I can also just create a new one on my own. And so this is what I want to show you in here. So you can see under new award, you would title this award whatever you would like to call it. So for our example, I'm going to choose course scavenger hunt, for example, or excuse me, let's do information literacy. We'll stick with the theme. And then I could include a description for my word that just says um, students who show exemplary information literacy skills. And then our choices in D2L are only to do a badge. D2L does have a certificate option, but in our instance, you will only see a badge option, so you wouldn't be able to change that. You can decide if you'd want to make this award available in all of your courses or only to um, your child units. So you could choose that. I always choose award in all of my courses to make it easier on myself. You can decide if you want the award to expire. So if you wanted the award to only be available to the student for the semester there in your course, you could do that, or you can set the expiration to never. And then you can choose your award image. So you can upload your own icon, which I've done for some of the examples in my own course, or you can choose from the D2L icon library. So you can see how many different options. So the third option has a book, so I'm going to choose that since this is an information literacy award. And then the issuer information is going to show bright space, and so that is still okay. And I want to use this award in this course now, which is my development course. And I would click save and close, and then I'm going to now see this badge available in my course. So you've created your award, you've decided what you want it to look like, but then you have to decide how are you going to issue this award. So you can do that a couple of ways. You can just issue an award to a student manually, or you can actually attach some release conditions to it, just like you would other things in your course. So if you use intelligent agents, you might be using those release conditions. You might use release conditions in your quizzes or your drop boxes. So this is going to work very similarly. So the actual way that you would do that part is in the edit properties section of the award. And so you can do a couple of things with your awards. You can actually assign points to them or you could leave them as zero points. Um, one interesting way that you might use points is that if you're going to include several of these behavioral type awards, you could uh, assign a certain number of points and then students, let's say a student ends 10 earns 10 points uh, as a result of earning badges, that those students might could trade those 10 points for dropping their lowest discussion grade. So a lot of times I have students who want to make up discussions late or who want to um, make up quizzes late. And instead of doing that, I might say, you know what, there's actually going to be opportunities in the course for you to earn some extra credit points. And if you earn enough, you could trade those in for uh, dropping your lowest grade. So that's one way. And those would be good that if you were going to hide those throughout the course. So you're trying to incentivize the student to actually do multiple things in order to earn those awards. That would be one idea. Typically, I'm just using zero credits for these awards because I just actually want to recognize student achievement. I'm not actually trying to get them to earn a number of points. And I typically click the award hidden until earned option because I don't want this award to show up in the student's 
backpack is what they call it unless or award shelf unless they've actually earned it and then i'm going to click create and this is where you're going to see the entire menu of things that you can add to an award so for my information literacy award i'm going to actually attach a couple of things just to show you how this might work so first thing i might do is say i have a discussion on information literacy in my course so I'm going to choose the score on the rubric that I've attached to that. And I'm going to choose which discussion it is, which is module one. And then I'm going to select my rubric. And then I'm going to select their overall rubric score, for example. And then I want to say I want them to earn an exemplary in this example. And then I would click create. And so you would see this is going to allow D2L to make this determination on my behalf. If you're not using a discussion rubric, you can do this still another way. You could also click create and you could also go to your grades and click grade value on an item. And then I could choose module one discussion for my grade list and I could say I want the student to earn a grade of 90 or better. So I would choose greater or equal to 90 and then I could create. So that would be another option if I wanted to create one that way. I could also choose things like quiz scores. I could choose things like content visited. So if I had an information presentation in my course, I could say visited content topic, and then I could go select that topic from my information literacy unit. I'm gonna choose that presentation and I'm gonna click create. So you can see there's so many different options that you can do if you want D2L to assign these awards on your behalf. There's also the option just to assign or award badges to students and you can do that manually. And so when you go to your class list awards, I could click on this student and I could click issue and then I could select an award from my list. So if I decided that this student did a good job on information literacy, I could click my information literacy award, and then I could just tell the student, this is why I've given you this award. You did an excellent job incorporating sources into your rough draft, for example. And then I could say, and this is a requirement, so I could say excellent rough draft, and then you'll see I can click issue and now that award is going to show up for my student. Whenever you go to your awards and go to available rewards, now you can see if I'm the student, I have now earned both of those awards. So as the student begins to collect the awards, they're all going to show up in their awards shelf. And when you go back to your course awards, you can choose each semester, even if you've created all of these awards. So for th this example, I've created a module award for every single module in the course. But what if I've decided that I don't actually want to award those every time? I can actually just set these to zero conditions and I, D2L is not gonna award those on my behalf. So it's not until I create those conditions that D2L is going to do that. So once you create your awards, it's very easy to use them or not use them every semester, depending on what you would like to do. And then your students are able to see those again as they collect them. And it's another interesting, um, I'm not gonna click into it because it will have the students' names, but from the instructor's point of view, at the end of the semester, when I look at my class list awards, if I have a long list of my students on this screen, I will see all of their awards and it can kind of be a really interesting way for me to tell what seems to be a hang up for students. So if I'm giving an award for every module and pretty much everyone's earning module one through four, but then only a few students are earning module five or six then I can start investigating. I wonder why that might be. Is it just it's the end of the semester, there's cognitive overload, students are stressed, they're really juggling a lot of things, and they just didn't happen to do everything in that? Or is there something in there that I need to look at? And then I might go and look at my grade book. I might look at the activities, the learning activities that are associated with those modules to tell maybe if there's something I need to look on. So the award can also have a benefit for the instructor because it gives you a nice overview 
You can also do this if you're looking at your course objectives. So if I, for example, let's use information literacy again. If I wanted to use information literacy and I wanted to join multiple assignments to that award, at the end of the semester, I could look to see how many students actually earned that information literacy award versus how many did not. And maybe there might be some things if I can see that evidence along with the evidence as I was grading my students assignments and I could see that a lot of the students were struggling with that maybe that's something that I could go back and reinforce in a different way. I know that that is a very quick and dirty um, <laughs> description of how to do awards. And so I wanted to just take about 30 minutes to do that and then open the rest of our time up for specific questions about D2L awards, if you have them, if you've been using them. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing now, but we can always open that again if we want to anybody have questions or experiences that you want to share about using D2L awards in your class? Wayne, um, uh, I, um, I've been told that you, that a student can only receive a particular award once. Is that correct? That is correct if you've set it up that way. So there's a couple of ways around that. So you could do an award, for example, for module one, that would be true. Everything that I've assigned for module one, they're only gonna earn that one time. But if I want them to earn an exemplary discussion award, I could actually attach that to more than one discussion. So I could say, assign that the, for all discussions versus just one discussion. So it's similar to an intelligent agent in that I can give it to student multiple times or not multiple times. Um, another way around that might be to create other discussion awards that are a little bit different. So one discussion award for exemplary original posts or another discussion award for exemplary responses to students. So if you want to incentivize students for different kinds of discussion behaviors, you could do that as well. I think that there are a lot of opportunities about using this. My thinking about discussion about awards in D2L is changing. I typically give awards for completion of all the modules or completion of an exemplary discussion because I'm using it as sort of a modeling opportunity. I want students to see, look, you did an excellent job on this discussion. I want you to keep that behavior up. But I am pretty intrigued by some of the ideas that I've been reading about where students actually could unlock these other opportunities. So students who particularly struggle with the first opportunity, uh, test attempt wasn't good. So what could they do to earn another attempt? Or what could you award that is maybe outside of your grades? So that kind of going to a writing center session or going to a library session, kind of a self-improvement going above and beyond. Those kinds of awards, I think, are pretty intriguing to use in your class. And then that way, the student's still getting the benefit of the grade, but it's a different kind of award that they can also showcase. I'm going to look at our chat to see. Um, so this is a good question from Lori. So they'll only know if they go to my awards. So that's a good question. I actually, what I do is I will assign the student an award and then I use the intelligent agent feature to send the student a notification that says, congratulations, you earned the module one award, for example. And then it has a nice little note telling them that I know that they can keep up that momentum throughout the rest of the course. So they can see the award in their awards uh, shelf or backpack, but they also receive an email from me using the intelligent agent so I'm not having to do it on my own D2L has looked for that and it is replacing their my first name replacement string with the student's name and they're getting that email from me as another form of congratulations so that's another option to do that I think it's also good to let students know if you're going to use awards in your course tell them that so that they know to be looking because that awards and you and you need to have the awards um, link in your nav bar in some way so that students can find it because if you don't have that then they wouldn't be able to use it um, so that's another really good question and then Kim said they'll also get the notification dot so that's another way that they would get notified 
And then MA has said, where was the new award? And so Kim has given that pathway there. So go to awards and then course awards. Um, and then Lori, let's see. I think we're down to Carlos's question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm getting there, Carlos. Okay. Is the teacher automatically informed when a certain student gets an award? Can the awards display on the right menu? So that's a good question, Carlos. I don't get notified when the student gets an award unless I've created the intelligent agent that I asked to send it to me. Also, sometimes I'll ask the intelligent agent to copy me if it has notified the student that they got an award. So I'm typically just kind of in the habit of checking that award every week because I know I'm gonna I'm teaching accelerated and I know those modules come fast and furiously so every week I'm gonna look how many students earn module one um, Kim may know if there's a different way but I don't see that in my notification tool I don't see when the student earns the award I have to look for it yeah you have to do it either as an intelligent agent that it copies you or you go look for it and then there is actually a game pack that's part of D2L, but to my knowledge, we don't have it at MTSU because there is a leaderboard feature and you could put that on your course homepage to let students see actually if you wanted to use, I could see this being a great tool for if you're doing student uh, groups, if groups are competing with each other, you know, who creates the best business plan um, for uh, their, you know, management or entrepreneurship course. And so, that could display on your course homepage, but I don't think MTSU has subscribed to that. The other thing that you might do in lieu of that is on your course news page, you could every week decide you're going to pick out three students who did something exemplary that earned an award and you could still recognize them. You could do a screenshot of that award. So you could create a leaderboard of your own, potentially. It's gonna take a little bit of work, but it would be a nice way to recognize students on your course homepage if they did earn that. And I think that probably works best, not for things like module one award, but things like um, exemplary discussion post or most improved, um, most helpful response, um, that kind of thing. And then are they portable to the portfolio or email signature? You know, a student should always be able to right click and save that image to put in their email signature. I also believe that they can share them to the portfolio, but Kim, I'm going to defer to her as well on this one. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yes, Good. thank you. Can. Um, and there's also a way that you can, uh, when you click on the badge, a little box will pop up and uh, and it gives you the ability to print. So you can then also print that information as a PDF and upload it as the full information about what that badge was for into the ePortfolio. Um, so that it's not just an image of a badge, but it actually tells the person what the badge is for. So, so it has that metadata attached to it, okay. Um, and that's why I think it's helpful. We have an empty engage pathway and by the time our students are going to get to the capstone information literacy is one of our um, program learning outcomes. So a student in their portfolio is going to have to demonstrate their ability to um, use information sources appropriately. This would just be one other option for them to attach. So it wouldn't be the only thing that they would share in their portfolio, but it would be something. Because in the research course that I'm teaching, it has a lot of information literacy assignments. So they would ha they have to practice this skill over and over and over. And by the end of the course, some of them have improved considerably. So if I wanted to do one of those tiered badges where I say you uh, level one, two, three, then a student could show growth also in that area, which would be another thing if you're doing a reflection in a portfolio. A student could comment on when I began this journey, I didn't really know a lot about using information sources, but now I'm actually able to use these sources quite effectively. That would be something great to put in a reflection for their capstone portfolio. 
And Carlos, to your question about, is there a wall that displays it? That wall displays it to them for themselves. The wall displays it to the instructor for everyone. But without that leaderboard feature in the D2L game pack, I don't think that that's an option. I think we would have to do that on our own. So I think you could do that on your news page or you could even create like a discussion topic maybe that's, you know, weekly awards where you could actually share with everybody. Here's how everybody's faring on the different award activities that you've incorporated into your class. I don't know if the awards, um, the game leader board tool is something that MTSU is looking at purchasing, but it is available. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it would be really neat. So um because there are those students i mean those killer students and those achiever students those are the students who are really going to be motivated by that and you can envision that there's probably some disciplines that would attract students that might be more apt to do that students in professional programs um might be really motivated by that kind of thing whereas other students that's not necessarily going to be that motivating to them but accumulating a lot of awards would be motivating to them because they would want to collect those explorers are going to want to collect i want the information literacy award and i want the discussion award it's more about the process of finding all of those in your course rather than just earning the most of those awards so it's more about the content than the quantity Does anybody else have other questions? Does anybody use awards and maybe have some tips that we haven't talked about? It's kind of one of those tools that's sitting there in D2L that you know you can use. You kind of have to play around with it. Um, but I do think it's, it's a, a neat other way to recognize students' achievements um other than just grades and especially whenever you're going to combine multiples into one because you it's easy for you to look in your grade book you know when you're grading your students assignments it's easy for you to tell the students who are doing well on information literacy for a, the draft assignment for example or their lit review but it's not as easy to see that over the whole course and so giving an award for that helps you see which students were able to do that well throughout your course, not just on one assignment. So it's another interesting way to do that as well. Well, if nobody has any other specific questions, I'm happy to hang around for a while. If you wanna ask just individual questions, I'll be here. Um, if you want to try using awards and you have any questions, um, a couple of people reached out to me after we did the intelligent agent one and we talked through some ideas. Um, it's just one of those things that I'm still playing around with. So um, if you have any good tips for me, please let me know too. I have uh, used some awards before that uh, kind of were directed at the killer and the uh, and the explorer type that when they got the award, it actually opened some, some of that additional information that wasn't viewable and it got them a little bit more excited and opened up to some things that may have been a little bit more off the beaten path and not necessarily in the same scope. And it kind of allowed for that. It's, it's almost like a choose your own adventure path when that happens. Like if you do that, I don't know if any of y'all remember those awesome books, but um, Choose Your Own Adventure, awesome. Um, and it, it was a way that you could get to the same learning, but you would get there different ways depending on how it was. So that really plays into active learning and how students engage with the information. And then they felt like they were able to go in different paths because different things opened differently depending on what you did and what awards you got. It takes a long time to set that up though, know that. <laughs> right. I mean, I think that's the tricky thing is that and I think that's why I've kind of defaulted to using it for things that are really obviously yeah. <laughs> um, easy to do, like doing a module award makes a lot of sense to me. And it's a way to show I mean, a student obviously can see in their grade book, I did this quiz and I did this discussion and I did this Dropbox. But seeing a module one award to see, oh, all of those things that I did together came together for this one achievement. I think that's still valuable. And I think students, um, 
some of those students really do um, appreciate that and are, get, are motivated by that. Another key point about behaviorism and motivation is that sometimes, and we all know this because this is why January 1, everyone's in the gym, and a start of a new time period is a key time in order to get students motivated because they think, this time I can do it. So if they just earn the module one award, that might be exactly the kind of motivation to push them into module two, new time period, right? So they've had that win and now maybe they're more likely to keep up with all of the activities in module two because that felt pretty good to get that module one award. And so if you can repeat that on all the cycles in your class, it's just one possibility of encouraging students and, and it's students they're under a lot of pressure right they're taking a lot of courses let's not even talk about the coronavirus pandemic that's added another layer of stress half of them are home helping their kids homeschool because their kids are in virtual school and so i think it's just you know these little awards might be that extra little motivation that helps students uh, get them over the hump All right, anything else? I mean, I'm just, I'm gonna stick around. So if anybody has anything else, just let me know. Thanks, Lane. Thanks. Bye, MA. Hey, Lane, this is Dave Wood. I've got you on my iPad and I've got my course, so I apologize for the wobbliness, <laughs> my course pulled up. I have uh, videos that I've recorded and I have embedded questions in those videos. And mm -hmm. as a uh, external learning tool or something to that effect, what I'm trying to, what I, my thought is I'd love to give them a, a, an award for watching the videos. So, so each each unit, there are 10 units, each unit has oh, you know, eight to 10 of these videos with these embedded questions. And I've built them into my grade book for, but they don't count toward their grade, but it allows me to go in and see if they've been watching the videos and taking the embedded uh, quizzes in the Panopto mm -hmm. um, videos. So I'm trying to figure out, how, that's why my question was: Can you could I put them all into a category and say, okay, if you what if you scored, you know, 80% on that category, even though it's not part of your grade, but it's by item, so I couldn't do that. So I thought, well, maybe if they just watch the videos. So I'm looking at the completed content topic as the condition mm -hmm. type. Would that work for? because I've got unit one lecture videos, but then I'm getting this error message that says select a valid topic when I try to do hmm. that. So I do Let's I have see. to drill down all the way to one particular video to do that? I'm gonna do the screen share again and let's look. I'm gonna pull up D2L. Okay, so we can do it together. So in um, the award,